Hello, we're History Hikers. We are in Masige. And behind us we have the Main de Masige, which is a reconstructed uh, trenches. It's, uh, the French and German soldiers were basically here all the during the war. war. Yeah. Never really changing uh, much in the battlefield. And they uh, reconstructed the trenches here some 10 years ago they started, I believe. Uh, looks very impressive from here, so uh, yeah. Let's check it out. Let's check it out indeed. I'm too tall. They would have shot me for sure. In the town of Masige, in the Marne department, lies La Main de Masige. La Main de Masige is a network of trenches from the First World War, occupied by both the French and the Germans. Its name derives from its shape, a collection of hills that represent a hand with fingers pointing to all sides. Volunteers have worked from 2008 onwards to uncover the remains of this awe-inspiring place, making it accessible and free for visitors. Visits are non-supervised, so be careful because accidents are at your own risk. Accessing the trenches is forbidden from 7pm until 9am. Imagine living in this, living in these. Yeah, for four years. Holy sh! That was a mine. A little boink. Hey. Even I'm too tall for you. Damn, that was scary. <laughs> that sounded like a bomb. Abri allemand. Yep, maybe it was German. Lights. Are we going to descend? It's okay. well, yeah. kind. very low. I'll just film it from here because I'm not sure how safe it is. Well, it should be safe. All right, all right. If you say so. Bunk beds. Yeah. Cool. There's mold on the wood though. You. That's not stick. During the First World War, La Main de Massige marked the eastern limit of the Champagne Front at the junction with the Argonne Front. In 1914, the Germans entrenched themselves on this natural height, each finger of which forms the bastion of this natural fortress. On the 13th of September 1914, the Colonial Army Corps, the 4th French Army, came up against this obstacle, while taking part in the counteroffensive following the First Battle of the Marne. La Main de Massige became the scene of bitter fighting throughout the entire war. 
An estimated 25,000 French soldiers and certainly as many German soldiers were killed, wounded or missing. Following the Battle of the Marne in September 1914, the front was locked in trench warfare. The Grand Quartier General, the French command structure, planned a vast offensive in 1915. They wanted to break the trenches over a 35 km long front, from Moronvier to ville sur toube The Colonial Army Corps was positioned opposite the Mainemassige to repel the German troops entrenched on the heights behind a dense network of barbed wire and prepared positions. An intense three-day artillery preparation had to breach the barbed wire networks and trenches while hampering the arrival of reinforcements for the Germans by destroying the railway junctions. Despite some advances, losses were high and the resistance of the Germans on the Mont Tetu, or the Viper's Head, prevented total control of the region. The deadlock was not dislodged until 1918. Two impact craters with a diameter of some 50 meters bear witness to some of the more spectacular moments of this four year long struggle. The Germans blew up the French positions after first digging an underground passage underneath their trenches. The trench was filled with explosives and detonated. It's a common method of breaking the deadlock that turned the farmland into a lunar landscape.
The French army used a nonsensical offensive strategy that would cost thousands of lives. L'attaque à outrance. The attack to the extreme. The lines of the Germans, who were concentrating on defense, were tried to be broken through with infantrymen running towards barbed wire howitzers and machine gun fire, only equipped with their rifle and bayonet. It eventually led to mass mutiny, not unlike in Craon, which was featured in last week's video. There is a visible difference between the French and German trenches. The latter look much better constructed and more comfortable. The French, much like the British, discouraged the construction of shelters because, at least in theory, they were always fighting. Food was brought in at night from the local villages. Or they hunted rats which had grown fat from the human flesh on the battlefield. The site had over the years become overgrown and forgotten. A local inhabitant, together with four other history enthusiasts, bought the plot from a farmer who wanted to grow crops on it. In 2008, the association de la Main de Massige was created. They removed the hedges and trees and started shoveling. They discovered the bones of the soldiers of both nations, everyday objects like bottles, cartridges, shrapnel and rifles. These objects are still on display in the trenches today, as if time really stood still. The site is marked by a flag permanently hoisted on top of a mast, together with an orientation table. The association also worked to identify the lost and missing soldiers of La Main de Massille and contacting the families of those they were able to identify. You can read their heroic stories on their website, which you can find in the description below.
that was a show around the man, the Masige. What do you think? I don't know. I'm quite silenced by it. Yeah, we can't imagine what they went through, but you do understand it better. Um, it's way dirtier than the trenches I'm used to seeing uh, in, uh, in Flanders. It was also like a nice touch that all like the corroded and rusted like, forks and bullets and everything were still there. Yeah. It's like time just stood still here. Yeah. It doesn't really seem like it's well known either. So if you ever want to get that feel of seeing a real trench, uh, yeah, come check it out. Man de Masiga. We're the history hikers. We're not going to bore you with the uh, YouTube stuff today. We need to be solemn and silent. Uh, and until next time. Bye. Bye.